Hello and welcome again. Today is the day we talk about the living goddess in you. Isn't that exciting? We're going to release the goddess that resonates in you. Let's start by taking a deep breath. And we do that three times. The number three is for form, focus, substance, form. And we're going to form an energy dome right here, right now for this wisdom teaching. <laughs> Now, if you've been following my videos, um, put your feet flat on the ground so that you're grounded as you're listening, you open up your heart, your fourth chakra. Hi, I'm Linda Babulik, and I'm dedicated to sharing wisdom teachings so that you have more zest for the woman of today, the executive woman, the entrepreneurial woman, the mom, the retired woman, whatever it is. Let me tell you a little story. Today, the goddess that I'm channeling is the goddess Hestia. Hestia is the goddess of the hearth. And I'm, we completely gutted the kitchen. And I'm now right at the stage at this moment, they should be putting the gas stove back in. And I had to clean out all the cupboards, put everything back into place, sort and everything. That's Hestia. She's the goddess of the hearth. So if you find yourself head first in a closet, sorting things out where you decide what you keep, decide what you throw away and put the rest back or give away. Throw, give, keep. That's what the goddess Hestia does. And when we do that, it clears our mind. You may not know why you're head first in the closet, but most of the time you come out of there and your mind will be clear. Whatever problem you have won't exist anymore or you will have found a solution. Isn't that juicy? I love this. So my quest to make a connection to my higher self led me to study the goddess and to rediscover the feminine wisdom and power found in these ancient myths and teachings. And I realized that the stories connected with the characteristics of these archetypes could help me recognize the gifts, the strengths, and the qualities that I hold. And I talk about that in my book. And I'm not alone in this quest. I quote, uh, I have a quote in my book that says, a quiet awakening is underway across America. <laughs> I suspect not just America, from the people I talk to and in France and in Australia and in Estonia. There were, it's going on all over the world. A quiet awakening is underway as women are coming together to worship, to tell their stories, to find their place spiritually. God as a jealous, punitive, white Anglo-Saxon male with a long beard and a longer arm lacks appeal to many contemporary women. This has led some to run into the arms of the goddess and find meaning in earth-centered or neo-pagan rituals. And what I teach and what I attune with is the earth-centered rituals. It has led others to join Buddhist sanghas where there is no personified, 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 personified God. You know, English is my second language. And it has led many more to question the relevance of their religious beliefs to the homily, homely realities of everyday life. That's on page 182 of my book. So today I'm talking about how to find that goddess that resonates in you, because these archetypes have specific characteristics that you can tap into. And better than that, I'm going to relate this right back to the oracle cards that I talked about previously. And today I'm particularly fond of following the goddesses because they help me to discern the qualities and characteristics that I want to emulate to deepen my spirituality. If you saw one of my other videos 
I have a beautiful picture of a goddess that hangs right in front of me across from my desk and it has butterflies flying out of it. For me, butterflies are perfect in every stage that they're in and they grow their wings and they're multicolored. They're, butterflies are goddesses and gods, I guess, if we have to assign a gender to something, which we really don't because it's an energy, isn't it? So let's go through a few of the goddesses that are listed in my book. So the Celtic goddess is Bridget, and she has healing powers and survival. And that's, she's celebrated coming up on the 1st of February in the Festival of Imblock. Remember, these goddesses have been around for ages and ages. I have a few in my oracle cards I want to share with you. I also have a, a Bridget necklace that I could have pulled out that I like to wear on the 1st of February and do some meditation around that and those rituals. Can't go into all of those details in these. I'm packing in as much as I can. So Kuan Yin shows compassion and mercy to all who suffer. That's Kuan Yin. And this card you see, it says right on there, compassion. Oh, I should give credit. This is from the Goddess Guidance Oracle deck by Dor uh, Doreen Virtue. And release judgment about yourself and others and focus on the love and light that is within everyone. She has a card for the Christian Mary, Mother Mary, expect a miracle. Mary is the divine mother of Jesus Christ, and she's revered for taking care of her followers. Then we have the Hawaiian Pele right here, who appears as a woman just before a volcanic eruption. Gifts of food and tobacco to Pele are said to have resulted in the lava streams stopping before they reach the threatened village. I didn't think of this until just now. Hold on. Watch this. I have to share this with you, even if it takes a few minutes longer. This is an image that was taken by helicopter in Hawaii over the volcano. I'll just move this over, make sure I get the right reflections there. Um, can you see down here? Down with the little ball, uh, let me see, uh, right there. See the goddess? And she is holding the globe of the world in her hands. How does that happen? Just as my friend was in the helicopter flying over the volcano in Hawaii, and she gifted me that. How wonderful, I eh? love the goddess. And you love when you get those messages. And she said when she took that photo, it reminded her of me. So it's awesome. There is the Mayan goddess on Cosmo Island on the east coast of Mexico are ruins of a shrine dedicated to Ixchel. Ixchel, it was customary for women who wanted to become pregnant or wanted to ease in childbirth to visit this shrine. And this Mayan site ruins is open to the public. And I've been there. That's why I chose to go to Cozumel for one of our vacations. It's wonderful. We walked in, there was nobody there, everybody left. And this is what I picked up. It's a painting of Excel on a suede. Not marvelous. And then somebody gifted me the frame. How do those things happen? They happen, that's why. And then the Greek goddess, um, we have quite a few of them. They're from the book called Goddesses in Every Woman by Jean Shibota Bolin. This woman changed my life. She came to where I was living and she gave a talk. I went with two other women and every woman there completely changed her life. That's another story. And she talks about these as archetypes. She's a Jungian psychologist. And she says from the Greek form, um, she says Artemis is the goddess of the hunt. So there she is, the goddess of the hunt and the moon and pers personifies the independent achievement oriented feminine spirit. And that's why I have my bow and my arrows on my wall right next to my goddess. 
Artemis, not goddess of the fight, not goddess of war. She's often mislabeled. She is goddess of the hunt and of strategy. Next, we have Athena. Athena is the goddess of wisdom and craft. She represents the logical, self-assured woman who is ruled by her head rather than her heart. And when I first got this book, before it was autographed by Jean Shibota Bolin, I had a friend that went to Greece. And I said, please bring me back Athena. Isn't she beautiful? She's porcelain. She's porcelain. And when my cleaning staff comes, I put her away in the drawer because she's so important to me. And she sits up here and watches over me every day. Look at how magnificent she is. The snake, we talked about that already. Shed their skins, good symbol. She's strong, she's powerful. She is the goddess of wisdom and craft. So the logical self-assured woman that you are, there you go. Oh, I forgot to show you my Mary statue. This is my Mary statue. It came from um, my mother-in-law's sister passed. And this was, I think, on her casket. And, uh, and she gifted it to me. Then we have um, Hestia that I talked about. She's the goddess of the hearth. She embodies the patient, steady woman who finds comfort in solitude. There is nothing more solitary than cleaning out cupboards or closets and exudes a sense of intactness and wholeness. So you can see how, why I love all these goddesses and how I try to pull in all of those characteristics into my life. And then there's Hera. She's the goddess of marriage. She stands for the woman who considers her roles as student, professional, or mother secondary to her essential role of finding a husband or wife and being married. Remember, these are the ancient Greeks. This is just one gender, one way of doing things. So it's finding a partner. That's Hera. And that's great because there are a lot of people on the planet, both men and women, that really that's their role in life. And they're so supportive and so loving. So we don't want to put that down. Hera sometimes get put down. All she wants is a husband. She wants to care for. Her. That's what she wants to do. She considers her role very serious, as we all do. Then there's Demeter. She's the goddess of grain and of mater she's and the maternal archetype. She represents a woman's drive to provide physical and spiritual sustenance to her children. Persephone. Nope, I don't have Persephone, sorry. Persephone is the maiden and queen of the underworld. She expresses a woman's tendency towards compliance, passivity, and a need to please and to be wanted to others. Persephone was condemned to Hades for six months of the year. So she spent six months with her mother Hera and six months in the darkness. So it's really... For those who have a brown bear as a totem, you are Persephone, because when winter comes, you really just want to hunker down with a blanket, not go anywhere, not do anything. You like to hibernate. That's the Persephone characteristic, that you take those winter months to regroup. Now, my friend who lives in Australia was telling me, she said, she came to live in Canada for a year or two. That's how I met her. And she said, they don't have the Persephone here. She says, because it's summer all the time in Sydney. And so they don't go to that darkness to recruit and, and regain their energy. So that's vital. And if you live in those places where it's always nice, you need to make your own time of introspection and hibernation. The next goddess is Aphrodite. Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty, not goddess of sex. She's not the goddess of sex. She's the goddess of love and beauty, the alchemical goddess governing a woman's enjoyment of love, beauty, sexuality, and sensuality. She impels women to fulfill both creative and procreative functions. Aren't they wonderful? And 
I pulled, as you know, I pulled my Oracle cards every morning. And since I had the goddess card deck out, I pulled Vesta this morning. Now, not funny since I had just been cleaning out the cupboards, came up to get ready and Vesta comes out all about your household situation is improving. It certainly is going to be beautiful. So you can rediscover your gifts, your strengths, your qualities in the feminine wisdom and the power found in ancient myths and teaching. We can do a full moon connection ceremony. There's eclipses that are going on, very powerful time. So to connect with the moon, just, and this is in my book, you can also do a sun ceremony like this. Just put your hands in a circle and capture the moon in there. Again, take your three breaths for form, focus, substance, form. And then you bring down the moon into your womb space and hold the energy of that full moon. That's what you call the ritual of bringing down the moon. Um, there's also, you can bring down the sun and at new moon, it's the time for you to create new things, new kitchen, new ideas, new creativity, whatever it is that you're interested in. So check out my other videos where I shared, as I said, about oracle cards, dressing for blessing. I always feel this a bit of a goddess outfit, isn't it? Sort of funky. I've got the orange inside. Yeah, funky, funky stuff. I like it. I like dressing like a goddess, dressing for blessing. Oh, that's another one we talked about, creating sacred space and more. And I'm packing it all in for you. So I'm sending, send me a note or a comment and let me know if there's something you want me to expand or even a new topic. And watch out, we're going to be deep diving into chakras five and six very soon. And I'll be posting. So watch for that. Thank you so much for being here. Hestia has got to get back into the kitchen and get that organized because it's date night tonight. Thanks. Bye.